You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Gavin Adotagosh has said some nice things about these podcasts, but in pointing to them and saying nice things, he raises a question. He writes, I'm a bit worried about the distinction Tim makes between a historically married God and a theological entity who wasn't. So maybe I should talk a bit more about that. You see, it seems to me that the Bible comes to us not like your average ancient text. Your average ancient text comes to us dug up from the desert or whatever, and it's dated. We know when it was written, give or take a decade or two. The Bible comes to us quite differently. It comes to us having been passed down by a complicated process of tradition and the only form of the Bible or any particular Bible book that we have access to is the canonical form that was passed down to us that's not quite accurate because the Dead Sea Scrolls for example give us access to what was probably an earlier stage in that process but by and large it's true this means that all of the historical stuff that I try to reconstruct around the biblical text is speculation. It should be intelligent speculation, it should be intelligent speculation based on evidence, but in the end it's guesswork. I can reconstruct with some plausibility the history of the development of particular biblical books, though if you look at the scholarship on the issue there's obviously going to be a considerable amount of disagreement and argument. I can reconstruct, again with some plausibility, the history of Israel, making use of the biblical text among other evidence. But again, any such reconstruction will be highly debatable. On the other hand, I have this text that comes to me as part of a canon of texts, part of a collection of texts that give meaning to each other and shape each other's meaning. Now, out of all that mess, questions like did an average ancient Israelite in the street believe that God was married can be answered reasonably sensibly. Those are historical questions. They're questions about what was going on in the world behind the text, not questions about what's going on in the text. They're historical questions, not literary questions or theological questions. Sometimes we have to say, I don't know, and often our answers will differ a bit depending on how we weigh the evidence but they're historical questions but as well as being a historical document of some kind the Bible is also a literary document it is a text one text now that it's all been collected together and that document says things whether or not you believe in the God that the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about God and what the Bible says about God can be answered by the same kind of a process of except that this time we're not looking at what may have happened behind the text in history but we're saying within this document what's happening now on the question of God's wife within the document the answer is quite clear the stupid idiots who thought that God had a wife had misunderstood God completely they'd reduced God with a capital G to a God just like all the other gods a male God just like all the other male gods and the Bible quite clearly says that that belief was wrong-headed so the God the Bible speaks about cannot be married because God isn't male for a start and you have to be male to be married that's what I mean by the distinction between reading the Bible looking for history and reading the Bible looking for theology